Hello everybody, today I would like to show you the basic parts of a 175 watt mercury vapor area light fixture. Now, this fixture looks very similar to any light fixture, like an area light in farms, small businesses, just anything. As you can see, you might recognize this design. And if you haven't seen my other videos, you'd remember that this thing is all assembled, but I have this assembled, just the front of it, so you can see what's going on inside. Now, I couldn't take off the arm because that is really, I had to tighten that a lot, like it was really hard to get tight and I also hot glued it since it wouldn't tighten all the way because the clamp, I don't know why, it's a bit warped so, tiny I to say, let's get started the first thing is the reflector and the lens now this is all one piece, as you can see it has this aluminum piece up here to reflect the light down so it doesn't go all the way up here and do some of the light output so you could see there's holes for mounting it to the fixture, which is mandatory. If you don't want any water getting inside, this basically just blocks off everything from getting inside. It basically closes the light fixture. This is the lens, this is the reflector. The lens, it doesn't really magnify the light too, too much, since it's not really a magnifier. It's more like a piece of plastic. This is all plastic, except for this part. And you may or may not have seen this design before, but it's pretty common. If you drive around the country and you look at farms, you I guarantee you, you will see one of these, one of these reflectors. They're very, very common, and they come in like metal halide lights, um, hyper sodium, and also mercury vapor. These are very, very common. Next is the light bulb. Now, you can't really see this from far away, but this is what a mercury vapor bulb looks like. It basically, that big thing in the middle is an arc tube, which is basically a piece of quartz that has two electrodes inside and one starting electrode, that's that, that little resistor, that's a resistor right here, is connected to the starting electrode. That's there to strike an arc. Without that thing, the ballast would have to have an igniter in it. But since it's just like a current limiter, this ballast, and nothing special, it's just a little transformer thing, it has this resistor so it's self-igniting. It's a pretty cool light. And it also has a uh, silver base and a ceramic insulator, so they're saving money when you see that. And this right here is the etch. It's a little sticker, you can't really erase it, that goes on here and it tells you basic information about the light. Now, this etch isn't really descriptive at all. All it says is mercury vapor, MV is mercury vapor, 175 watt and made by Globe. So, pretty cool light bulb, and yeah, that's the light bulb. The next part is the photo cell. Now this thing basically controls when the light turns on and the light turns off. It's a desk to gun light sensor. So when there's light, it shooks that little relay inside, that's a relay, and it shuts off the light. When there's no light going in, it closes the contacts on the relay and the light turns on. So it has a little twist lock plug on the back, so you just put it in and twist it. And it's a pretty cool little thing, as you can see there's a whole lot of info on there. Can't really read that since it's black text on a black background, but in real life it's pretty good. You can see it kind of from here. As you can see it says, I don't know if you can read that, time delay up to two minutes. Now, that is because this thing is really slow at sensing light. And these also die out after like 12 years, so you're going to have to replace these, that's why they sell replacement things. They're a pretty cool little thing. Some of them come with a complete covered top and just a little window for the photocell. Otherwise it's kind of like a shaded top. But this one is like completely clear, you can really see what goes on in there. It's quite neat. And last is the whole entire light fixture. This thing is pretty heavy. Because there's a big transformer in here. Now, as you can see, this is a aluminum casing. Maybe fake metal, I don't know. It kind of feels plastic yeah, I don't know. It feels aluminum, though. It's interesting. Now, as you can see, this is the light bulb holder. It's a large base. And inside, you can see that there is a transformer. Now, this basically controls... It's called a ballast. It's a current limiter. And it controls the current going through the light bulb. 
Now, these lights are something called negative resistance, so which means they draw as much current as they possibly can until they pop. Now, this thing here, the ballast, actually limits it so it doesn't consume all the power in your house. It's quite heavy, though. It's the only downside. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of wires in there. I have all the terminals hooked up. Right here is the positive end, and right here is the negative end. So you just take the wires that this gives you and connect them together with morettes to the um, main house wire. And this thing right here is the ground wire, in case anything like sparks or anything hits it. That wire is not live, it goes directly to the ground. And it could trip the circuit breaker if anything goes wrong in here. Now another part of this light is the arm. Now this is actually an extension arm, and as you can see I installed it backwards. Because that's what the picture said anyway, the lie on the picture. It's supposed to be, there goes the input, and then it just goes the light on the end. But really it doesn't matter, like I've seen lights mounted like this, and lights mounted like this if you wanted to far out. But I like it kind of close to the pole. It's quite neat. And this arm did not come with the fixture, they usually don't. Some of them, some light fixtures, they do include it when you buy it, but this one didn't, so I had to go out and buy one. It's a quite heavy fixture, and on the top is the photocell socket. So you can see it says north, so that's the way you point the arrow when it's all installed to make sure it's installed right. And on the other side, it's heavy. There we go. It tells you all your information on what to use it in, like the environment to use it in, how much watts it could take and everything. So, this is the main part, and you can't run a light bulb without this part right here. Last, I'm going to show you the basic assembly of the fixture. Now, all you're really going to need is a screwdriver. If you want to just assemble it before you can call a person to put it on a post or whatever. So, I'm not going to show you how you install this wiring because you probably already know all that or the company that installs it will do all that for you. And this arm I'm not going to take off because again I mentioned that this is really hard to get on and there is a hot glue here so I can't take that off. But on the box uh, when you get this arm there's basic instructions on how to mount it and everything. So let's get started with this. So first what you want to do is you want to take the reflector here. Now as you can see there are three screws right here. Those won't be in there, there will be three screw holes so you just want to screw those in. You just want to put the screws in to the holes there. And then what you want to do, if you can see this, you'll see these little holes here with a larger hole in the side. Now once you install the screws, you just want to do that. You want to get this up close here. So once that's in, what you want to do is you want to find the screws and put them in their holes, as you can see right here. So they just go in like that. And then you just turn it and sometimes it, you won't get it the first time, but it will lock in. As you can see, it's not moving. Maybe it's a bit loose, but that's where you need a screwdriver. Now, I did have one around here, and I'll need to get one. So, here's the Phillips screwdriver. What you need to do is make sure it's off. If you do that, that'll really hurt. Put that in there, and just tighten the screws, like you would with anything. And make sure you hold it, kind of, so it doesn't go all over the place because these things do like to slip out and just tighten it kind of a bit at a time so it doesn't slip and once you tighten all three there you go that should be solid and it won't move now the next thing you want to do is not install the light bulb yet you want to flip it over like this so you can see the photocell socket now to install the photocell you want to look, locate the large prong right here and insert it into the large hole. So it should just go in like this and then you turn it. it should, there's an arrow that says install. You just turn it and then it locks in. So that installs that. And lastly, you want to install your light bulb. So that's just any light bulb. You just screw it in and now your light should work. So you can see, we did it all right, so the light bulb turns on. 
So I hope this helped you. That's the basic parts of your regular NEMA head area light and how to basically assemble the light fixture. So, I hope you enjoyed, and as always, thanks for watching.